In 2022, I tried 120 whiskies in 365 days. Last year in 2023, I tried 175 whiskies. And today I'm going to go through these with you to share the ones I think that you should try, the ones I think that you should deny, and the ones that I think you should buy. Let's get stuck in. Thank you guys for coming along. This is one of my favorite videos to do each year as I get to reminisce and go through all the whiskies that I tried over the last 365 days from the 1st of January right through to the 31st of December. It's a very big list and uh, I've got it in front of me here on my laptop so we're going to get started and go through them one by one alphabetically. Let's go. Uh, 78 degrees Australian whiskey. My understanding, this is a single grain whiskey from South Australia. Deny. Adams Distillery, AD00189, 18 of 24X Sherry, mild peated private cask. I know that no one is going to find this, but uh, if you do find it, try it. A great peated and sherried Australian whiskey. Amberlane Equinox buy this. Been very impressed with every Amber Lane that I've tried. Some of the best sherried whiskey coming out of Australia. Amber Lane Noble Lane, buy. Amber Lane Silk Road, buy. Uh, Amber Lane Sleigh Bells, buy. Amrit Fusion. I think this is one worth trying. Ardbeg 19 Travan, I think is how you pronounce it. Uh, batch one, try it was uh, disappointed. I thought it would be far better than it is. It's very expensive. A 19 year old Ardbeg wasn't blown away. It's good, but it's not great. Aaron 10 by probably one of the best value whiskies with great specs that you're going to get in the market at an incredibly reasonable price for what it is. Baker's seven year old single barrel. This is a Kentucky straight bourbon. I liked it. Yeah, try. Ballantines, just their everyday expression. Tried at a bar. It's garbage, deny. Balvenie 12 American Oak, yeah, worth a try. If you like virgin oak, it's got a little bit of a spiciness that gives a lift to the um, typically softer Balvenie spirit. Balvenie Portwood 21, definitely try. It's very expensive for what it is. It's a good whiskey, but it's definitely overpriced. I love Ben Nevis and I tried this 10 and was extremely disappointed with it. I will say deny. Ben Nevis 18, Douglas of Drum Lanrig. It's incredible. Buy it if you can find it. Incredible whiskey. It is uh, one of my top rare whiskies of 2023. Uh, ben Riak Cask Edition 11, 2010 PX Punchin Australian Exclusive. Buy it if you can get it. Uh, a lovely PX example of the Ben Riak. Ben Romark 10, Buy. Ben Romark 15, buy. Uh, one of my uh, top five whiskies of the year for 2023. Ben Romark Contrast, Cara Gold Malt 12. Deny. I was disappointed with this one. I like a lot of Ben Romark stuff, but this one was kind of meh. Bladnock Vinea, I think is how you say it. Deny. Brook Laddie, the classic laddie. I will say buy on this one. It's a really good, reliable whiskey that's just a nice, easy, and uh, well put together malt. Boonhaven 12, buy, all time, classic, lovely, lovely whiskey. Burnside, unenviable, Speyside 24. Uh, a teaspooned Balvenny blended malt, expected more for what it is, deny, it was just meh. Bushmills 10, uh, yeah, try it, it's, it's, a, it's a staple, right? It's a core offering Irish whiskey, I was gonna say Italian whiskey. Yeah, try it. Kalila 15, unpeated, 2016. Uh, try it. It's interesting to try an unpeated version of Kalila, but it was so hot. I think it was 61.5% and it drank so hot and I drowned it in water and it was so much intensity. It still tasted peated to me. It didn't feel like it was anything different to a normal Kalila, which might just be my palate, but yeah, worth a try. Maybe you'll have a different experience. Khan Moore, Strictly Limited Altmore 9, 2012. Try it. When I opened it, it was way too hot, 47.5%, but just drank super hot and was disappointed with it. And over time, it's opened up. 
Casa Divino's Whiskey 13th Birthday Release Isle of Jura 12 Barrel 701010 from a refill, but try it. I am going to say it's a terrible whiskey, but it is so bad that it intrigued me and I've never tasted anything like it. So I think it's worth trying just to experience that. It was like good whiskey was fighting bad whiskey in the glass and neither won the battle. Uh, Doc Swinson's six-year-old single barrel cask strength straight rye whiskey. Buy it. Beautiful rye whiskey. Just like um, buttered toast. It's incredible. Drum Chambeau Pinot Noir cask. It's an Irish single pot still whiskey eh, deny i didn't really care for it to be honest edradour 16 year old equilibrium 2 from the whiskey sponge try it i was disappointed i was expecting better most of the whiskey sponge stuff that i've tried is really good this one wasn't really to my liking fable moon chapter 3 daluin 11 try flora and fauna blair apple 12 try Flora and Fauna, Dal Yun 16, try. Glen Elgin, The Manager's Choice, Single Cask Selection, Cask Strength 2009, distilled in 1998. I had this at a bar and they talked about how it was a mothball distillery, but I believe it isn't. It was rubbish. I absolutely regretted my purchase of this and didn't like it at all and uh, deny. Glen Murray 18, try. Glen Alecky 10, Cask Strength, Batch 8, buy, lovely, just gorgeous. Glen Alecky 15, buy, love it. Glen Dronach 19, Madeira Cask Finish, if you can find it and you can afford it, buy it, stunning whiskey. Glen Dronach 12, show exclusive, 10 year single cask, I believe this was for the whiskey show here in Australia. Deny, I was actually really surprised and disappointed with this one, 60.5%. A lot of heat, no flavor, even watered down. Uh, 10 years too young for a Glendron arc, just didn't rate it. Glen Farkless 105, uh, nah, deny. Glen Farkless, the family cask, 28 year old, 1992, summer 21, release cask 872. I got this because people said to me after I had an opinion on Glen Farkless being lackluster that I need to try the family casks. After trying this, they're still lackluster. It was, nah, there was nothing to it. I just don't, I don't see it, guys. I just don't see it with Glen Farkless. Deny. Glen Glasser 12, deny. I wanted to like the new Glen Glasser range. Don't waste your time. Glen Glasser Port Soy. It was the best of the three, so I'd say if you're gonna try any, try this one. Glen Glasser Sand End, deny. Glen Goyne 12, try it. Glen Goyne 18, if you're going to buy one, probably go the 18. It's uh, a big jump up from the 12. So I'm going to say buy on the Glengoin 18. Glengoin Legacy Series Chapter 2, deny. Glenmorangie 12, the La Santa, try. Glenmorangie Signet, buy if you can get at a reasonable price, but absolutely not worth $350. It's absurd what they ask for this. If you can get it on sale, buy it. Otherwise, at the bare minimum, you must try this whiskey. Glen Turret, 15 made and released by this. I was very impressed with this one. I loved it a lot. Gordon and McPhail, 2003 Kalila, 17 single cask, cask strength by very, very nice Kalila. Gordon and McPhail, 2007 Kalila 13 Hermitage cask finishes a red wine cask. It worked. I really like that one. Buy that one. Hazelburn 10, buy it if you can find it. It's uh, got this beautiful, um, funky, fermented pineapple note. Really cool. I like that a lot. Heartwood, great expectations. Heartwoods is an independent bottler in Australia. This one is uh, Adam's Peated Expression, Adam's Distillery from a Spanish PX cask. Buy it if you can get it. Stunning. Heartwood Whiskey from the Toolbox. This is a blended Australian malt from Launceston Distillery, Lark Distillery, and Fanny's Bay by Hellier's Road, Dark Harmony. This is a blended Australian whiskey. It, it gets sort of positioned as a 17-year-old whiskey, and then I found out that it's a 17-year-old grain uh, blended with a seven-year-old single malt. I liked it, 
but um, I felt like they, they definitely tried to position it as a older uh, single malt when it isn't. Put me off a little bit. It's a nice whiskey, try it. Hellier's Road Journeyman, try. Highland Park 18, try. It's not as good as everyone says. It's worth trying to have the reference point, but far from impress me. Highwayman, Sob Story 2023, try this one. There's a lot of good stuff coming out of Highwayman down in Byron Bay. Highwayman, The Dark Side, this is a PX and Stout Cask vatting single malt by this epic. Dan at Highwayman paired this with a sea salt and sour cherry chocolate that he was selling with the whiskey and together it'll blow your mind. Uh, Highwayman, Treacherous Radicals, Peated Apera finished in tequila and non-peated tawny and red wine casks. So try this one as well. Uh, Hinomaru, the first edition. This is a Japanese blended whiskey from a distillery that traditionally produces sake. Worth trying, very sweet and elegant, beautifully put together. Isla Sponge Part 3, Kill Dalton 14. This is a Ardbeg 14 at 60% buy it. It's incredible. One of the best whiskies that I tried. Don't even think twice if you're a peat lover. Jamison, normal Irish whiskey. Uh, it's don't, don't waste your time, deny. Uh, Jim Beam lineage. Not bad. I mean, it's, it's nice bourbon, but um, yeah, try. Johnny Walker Blue Label. I think you should try. Everyone should have that as a reference point. Johnny Walker Green Label 15. Try it. I didn't really like it. I was underwhelmed with it. It's not bad. It's a blended malt. Yeah, I wouldn't buy it again. Cavalan Solist Vino Barrique Cask W120727140A. a These are all single cask whiskeys, hence why I give the reference. Uh, lovely. Try it. Absolutely. You know, they're all going to be different being single cask whiskeys, but that one that I tried, I enjoyed very much. Kilhoman 100% Isla Barley, 12th edition 2022 is a publican barley. Buy it, stunning. Probably the best Kilhoman that I tried. Beautiful whiskey. Kilhoman Cansado 2022, try. Kilhoman Cognac Cask Matured 2023, try. A Kilhoman Face Shield 2021, buy this one. I like this one of my favorite of the Kilhoman range as well. Kilhoman Fino Sherry Cask Matured 2023. Try it. It's definitely not the best Kilhoman. I think the other expressions are better. Kilhoman Loch Gorm 2022. Yeah, buy this one. But I will say that I think after trying this and the Seneg, I prefer the Seneg. Uh, Kilhoman Machia Bay Cask Strength 2021. Buy. Kilhoman Madeira Cask 2021. Buy. Kilhoman Seneg. Buy. Kill Karen 16. If you can get it, absolutely buy. Kill Karen 8 Cask Strength. Try this one. A, a little bit too rubbery for me. I enjoy a lot of Campbelltown stuff, but these ones I think are a try and get a sense before you jump in. You, you know, see if you like them first. Uh, the Kill Karen 8 Port Cask, try. Kill Karen 8 Sherry Cask, try. Lagavulin 11 Offerman Edition 3 Chardo Cask, buy. Lovely whiskey. Lagavulin 12 Cask Strength Special Release 2021 by, I bought a couple of bottles of this one. I really enjoy that one. Uh, Lefroy 25 2019 Vintage by, just stunning, my top rare whiskey of the year. Lefroy Portwood by, Lefroy Triplewood by, probably my favorite. A, a little step up on other Lefroy's. It's just so sad they discontinued this one. Uh, that one's something special. Lark is an Australian single malt. Their Chinotto Cask 2 by, it was really interesting. Uh, Lecheg 10 by, stunning. Just great for what it is. Lecheg 18 batch 2, Spanish sherry wood finish. These are some of the older Lechegs that I tried. They're very hard to come by now. I, I would try this one. Lecheg 1996 vintage, 19 year old Oloroso cask. This is the one I would buy out of the two. Really cool whiskey, that one. Loch Lomond 12 by definitely flying under the radar. Incredible value. It's got this great industrial note to it. It's it's a really good whiskey. I really, really was surprised. Loch Lomond 18, I will say on this one, try. 
just to compare, I actually think that the 12 is where it's at and I would buy the 12 over the 18. Uh, Lock Loman original, I'm going to say try. Uh, Lockley inaugural release, deny. I feel like wait till Lockley has some age statements on it. It was one of the worst whiskies I tried of the year, the Lockley stuff. I, I hated it. The Lockley sewing edition first crop, deny. Terrible whiskey. M&H Apex Dead Sea Cask. I'm going to say try on this one because it's better than the element sherry that won best single malt in the world m h elements red wine cask deny rubbish m h elements sherry cask I, i'm going to say try because i want people to see that this is absolutely not the best single malt in the world the award that they were given given is a is a farce it's rubbish it's there's nothing special about that whiskey it's just average whiskey so try it so you know what i'm talking about but i don't buy it uh, mccallan classic cut 2021 garbage whiskey deny mccallan rare cask 2020 try it it's a good whiskey but not for the price that you pay for it i put this up against the glen 12 and the glen 12 destroyed it at a fifth of the price mclean's nose try uh, a very good blended whiskey actually i'm gonna say I'm going to upgrade that to buy. McLean's nose, buy it. If you like blended whiskey, that's about one of the best that you'll get. Mikkel Tor, the Chinkapin one, five-year-old. I like this one, actually, and I'm not a fan of virgin oak normally on a whiskey, so I'm going to say buy that one. That one sort of surprisingly impressed me. I expected to like the sherry one more, but I, I kind of like this one better. Uh, Mikkel Tor, the original five-year-old. Yeah, buy it. Mikkel Tor, the Sherry one, five-year-old buy. Uh, Mikkel Tor Turbo 5. This is the best of the bunch, in my opinion. Good stuff, man. And these are only five years old. This stuff is really good. Buy as well. Morris Rutherglen Musket Barrel, an Australian single malt by probably one of my top two, maybe top three Australian distilleries. They're just doing it right. Bottling in 700 mils uh, and they're not charging an arm and leg. You'd be hard pressed to find better Australian whiskey, in my opinion, at this stage for every variable considered. Really rate them. Morris Rutherglen Sherry Barrel by Morris Rutherglen Signature by Morris Rutherglen Toke Barrel by Nicker Coffee Malt. Buy this one. I think this one was good. Uh, Nicker from the Barrel. Yeah, bye. It's a good whiskey. Nika Miyagikyo, I think is how you pronounce it. Bye. Nika Yoichi, bye. North Star, Tobomori 26, 1995. Eh, try. It, I expect it better. Octomore, 13.2. Maybe it's this expression. I don't see the hype, what it was about. It was a lot of smokiness and not a lot of anything else. And as a peat lover, I went into this expecting to really like it more. I'm gonna say deny. I know that's gonna make people surprised, but yeah, I didn't like it. Old Kempton Pinot Noir cask, terrible, deny. Old Kempton port cask, also terrible, deny. Didn't really care for them. Uh, Old Pultney, 15, try. Overeem port cask matured, six year old barrel and batch, Single cask, try. Paloma, Kalila 11, Palo Cortado, Sherry finish, single cask, cask strength, try. Penelope Architect, try. Penelope Barrel Strength, try. Red Breast 12, cask strength, buy. One of my top five whiskies of 2023. Beautiful stuff. Redwood Empire, Pipe Dream, Bourbon Whiskey, I think this one was really good. I'm, I'm not big on bourbon, but this is much better than some of the other bourbons I've tried. I'm going to say try on this one. Remnant, the elusive, basically bottlings of ex Nant stock. That was a Tasmanian distillery that went under probably the best of their expressions that I've tried so far. So I'm going to say buy that one. The elusive is very good. Uh, Remnant, the golden fleece, try. Uh, Samaroli, Craig Ellicky, 12 year old. 2009 this was cask 900367 if you've ever had those oxo beef stock cubes 
It was like that and fermented Vegemite. Very, very cool, different, right? I'm gonna say try on that one just because it's unique. Samaroli Glentockers 14, I think that's how you pronounce it. 2008 cask 901229, beautiful stuff. Just so well put together, try. Samaroli Linkwood 10 year old Australian exclusive 2012 cask 311705, try. Very nice as well. Scozzi edition three. This is one that the whiskey list guys put together. Springbank 15 and Amber Lane blended malt. Good stuff. A combo of Springbank and Amber Lane. You can't really go wrong. I know you probably won't be able to get this now, but if you find it, buy it. Uh, single malts of Scotland and Orkney distillery 13 years. Try this one. This is probably the best Highland Park that I've ever tried. What Highland Park can be when it's not bottled by Highland Park themselves. SMWS 24.154 Confessions of a Sherry Cask 12. Incredible stuff. Buy that one. SMWS 26.185 Solo Ice Cream Spiders 8 year old. Try it. SMWS 46.122 Dark Madeira Soaked Plums 14. Stunning. Buy. SMWS 53.2 394 Smoke and Mirrors 11 by Outstanding Whiskey. SMWS 68.78 Smoking Bananas in a Frankincense Den 13. Yeah, really cool. Bye. SMWS 7.234 Appealing Apricot Jamboree. Try. SMWS 88.24 When Fruit and Cream Collide 12. Didn't like it, deny. SMWS 96.32, Sunshiny Shimmer of Satisfaction 10, try. SMWS Smokus Fruticosis, 10 year old. I'm gonna say deny, there's better, better whiskeys from those guys. Spayburn 15, buy. One of my top five whiskeys of the year. Great value, incredible for what it is. Spring Bay Bourbon Cask, try. Spring Bay, the Reben Port Cask Matured Cask Strength. Buy. This is the one. A lot of people talk about the bourbon cask. The, the Port Cask is where it's at. Springbank 10. Buy if you can find it. Springbank 10 Local Barley. Buy it if you can get it. And it's a reasonable price. I know it won't be, but stunning whiskey. Stunning whiskey. Springbank 10 PX Cask Strength First Edition. I'm gonna say try this one. A lot of reviewers have talked about this. The PX drowns out the Springbank character. It's missing a little something. It's good, but I think skip that and, and look for some other expressions of Springbank if you have to be selective. And with Springbank, we do, right? Starwood Ginger Beer Cask 7. I'm gonna say try this one. It may be polarizing, but a very cool, unique, different whiskey, like full ginger, like you wouldn't believe. Incredible stuff. Sullivan's Cove, double cask. In this instance, the seven-year-old DC-112. Buy it. If you can get Sullivan's Cove, it's quite possibly the best Australian single malt that there is. When you try it, you realize it's as good as a Scottish single malt. It competes on a global scale. Sullivan's Cove, French oak, 14-year-old. In this instance, we're talking TD-0287. Buy so well crafted, beautiful Australian whiskey. Talisker 25, 2011, bottle 2883. I'm going to say try on this one. Beautiful whiskey, but I think personally, the 18 is the sweet spot. There's a little bit more oiliness. So much of the pepperiness has subdued in the 25, and I preferred the 18 a little bit more, but a stunning whiskey for sure but I'm gonna say try, and uh, if you can get the 18, I think that's the one to buy. Tamdu 12, buy. People are gonna find this odd. I think the 12 is better than the 15. Tamdu 15, I think you should buy this one. It's a lovely whiskey as well. Tamdu Quercus Alba Distinction. I'm gonna say deny on this one. It was my least favorite Tamdu expression. The Gospel Projects Legacy Rye. This is an Australian rye whiskey. It's okay, but I'm not the biggest rye drinker. I'm gonna say try. New Zealand Whiskey Collection Dunedin Double Cask 16, try. The New Zealand Whiskey Collection South Island, try. The New Zealand Whiskey Collection, the 
Amaruvian, I think is how you say it. 18 cask strength double wood. This was really nice too. I'm gonna to say try on this one. The Whiskey Agency and Casa de Vino's Croftingia, I think is how you say it. It's Loch Lomond, 15 year old, 2005. Try this one. It wasn't my favorite. The Whiskey Cellar, Ben Nevis, 10 year old. This is an independent bottling. It's a PX sherry cask finish. Incredible, buy it. Okay, the Whiskey Jury, Isla Single Malt, apparently is a Lafroy 30 year old, 1990 cask, 4404303. Incredible, buy it. It's uh, probably an arm and a leg if you can find it, but just phenomenal stuff. Uh, the Whiskey Jury, Isla Single Malt, Lafroy 32 year old, 1989 refill barrel, 4416139. I did these side by side, head to head. Both of them are over 50% ABV. Incredible, stunning whiskies. Buy, absolutely. If you can and you're prepared to spend the money, buy. Uh, the Whiskey Jury, second anniversary bottling, Ben Nevis 25, 1996, cask 1473. Try this one, lovely stuff, but just not quite enough for me to justify the big spend on that kind of bottle. Waterford Cuvie, I think is how you say it. Um, these are Irish uh, single malts. Good stuff, different, right? I think it's worth trying. Uh, Waterford Gaia Organic, try. Uh, Waterford Luna Biodynamic, try. Waterford Peated Fennus Court, try. Warbs Harbour Founders Reserve, these are new Australian single malts coming out of Tasmania. They took a old, like an oyster farm and converted it into a distillery right on the, on the coastline. Stunning stuff. These guys are gonna be one to look out for. So if you can find this stuff, buy it. Warbs Harbour Port Storm, buy. That's probably my favorite of all the ones I try. I think that's the one. If you have to choose one, pick the Port Storm. Uh, Warbs Harbour, uh, Warbs Original, try that one. That's kind of like their baseline 43%, their sort of get to know them type expression. Whippersnapper, single grain, wheat whiskey, Australian. Yeah, just rubbish, just not even worth worrying about, deny. All right, we're getting close. Whiskey Sponge, exclusive Australian edition, number four, Ardmore 13. Really, really lovely, easy to enjoy. Zesty, a good balance of smoke and texture. Yeah, I'm gonna say buy on that one. Whiskey Sponge, number 57, a Glenlivet 14, 2007. Try, I liked it, but it wasn't anything to blow me away. Like I wanted a Glenlivet at cask strength, but it was just very simple, not a lot to it. Whiskey Sponge, number 64, Dalyun, 25-year-old, 1997 vintage. I'm gonna say try. Whiskey Sponge Edition 36B, 2004 Balakin, Balekin, I've heard it pronounced all different ways, apologies, I'm not quite sure. Uh, 17 year old, single cask, cask strength. Wasn't really feeling it. I, I expected something else from that one, so I'm gonna say deny. And finally, the Wolfburn Batch number 458. I'm gonna say try. This was really good, lightly peated PX, Sherry Butts influence captured my interest around Wolfburn, so definitely worth trying. Okay, guys, that is my list. An incredibly long year, a lot of whiskeys tried, a lot of fun doing this kind of stuff. Keen to see what you guys think. I know that not everyone is going to agree with my opinions on this, but uh, that's it. They're just opinions, and uh, hopefully, they bring some value to you when you are considering potentially trying or buying some of these whiskies that I've tried in the past year. If you haven't yet seen part one of all the whiskies I tried in 2022, go and check that out. I'll put the video link right here for you now. Go and watch that one as well. And until next time, may your glass be full of fantastic whiskey. My name is Wade and I will catch you on the next one on McIntyre's Malts.